afternoon, sports fans. We're back at you. The PB&Z Sports Chaos Show, your weekly sports sandwich. We are live today at our remote site at the Ski Chalet in Billerica called Mount Pine Rust. Anyways, Paul, a few shout-outs, first of all. Yeah, um, I wanted to thank some of our members. Our membership's growing on our Facebook page. It's hashtag PB&Z. That's PB and the letter N-Z, Sports Chaos. And um, we're starting to get some members from all over the country, actually all over the world. Whoa, yeah, we are yeah. global. global. We are a global sports show. Global yes. Sports show. We, we got, um, we got um, Gustavo down in Brazil. We have um, Gina in China. China in the and house. Then, and we also have um, a span now reaching across the country. Uh, I'd like to put a special shout out to uh, Annie down in New Orleans. Ooh, New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, New Rich, Orleans. Rich out in California. And um, Christelle in Cincinnati. They're all members now on our uh, Facebook page. So we thank you for that. Love you. Keep it coming. Yeah. Hey, and this week we are fueled by Brewmaster Jacks in Bruiser IPA 7.0. It's a potent one. Yeah, it is. These guys are located out in Northampton, Massachusetts. Founded in 2011. Uh, Northampton Mass. Is that another 413er? It is. They got some good brews out there. 413 in the house once again. Thank you very much. All right. Let's get right to it. PB, I want to talk about the last 10 days in sports. A lot of stuff has happened yeah, that's really busy. not related to the field, ice, or court, right? When you think about it, let's take a look what's happened. All right. Manny Machado, 10-year deal with the Padres for $300 million, a record contract. Zion Williamson blows out his shoe in the most highly anticipated basketball game of the season, and now he hurt his knee and all the big fusses about whether or not college basketball kids should be allowed to skip college and go right to the pros, right? Yeah. We had some sad news. Legendary African-American pitcher Don Newcomb died this week. Uh, Don Newcomb, or last week I should say. Don was the first African-American pitcher in the major leagues and won a Cy Young as well playing for the Dodgers. Also, locally, another baseball uh, contributor, Nick Carfato. Nick was a writer for the Boston Globe. Fantastic writer. I used to love reading his Sunday Notes pages. I'm sure you did as well. He did it for many of years. He was an unbelievable contributor. And unfortunately, Nick passed away on a day that he was off, but he was still covering the team down at uh, JetBlue Park. All right, let's talk about crazy. The craziest thing that happened in the last 10 days, Robert Kraft, book for solicitation of prostitution. We will talk more about that a little bit later, but that is a scary topic we're going to get into. Bryce Hopper. So, not only does Manny Machado sign his contract, Bryce Hopper mm-hmm. turns around and signs his 13 years, $330 million. We'll talk about that a little bit later. NFL news. Kyler Murray. Apparently, he is not a little guy after all. We will talk about that. And the last bit of off-the-field trouble. CEO Larry Bear of the San Francisco Giants, yesterday, in a park, having lunch with his wife, knocks her down to take her cell phone away as they're arguing about something on that phone. Totally off the field. Again, another incident. But we we digress. Let's move on to sports on the ice. Boston Bruins. We'll talk about that momentarily. The NFL Combine, which started today. We'll talk about that. Mock drafts. We'll get into the mock drafts a little bit. We'll talk about the Patriots. And then we'll finish up with the uh, situation with Mr. Kraft and the elephant in the room. Yep. All right. Let's talk about the whole baseball situation. Machado going to the Padres. What do you think of that, PB? Well, first we look at uh, the division, right? So you're in the NL West. Very competitive. Very competitive. you got the Giants, you just mentioned. Um, you also Dodgers, have the Dodgers. Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, the Rockies. Um, you, that, that's a pretty competitive division. Um, and, you know... It, can San Diego take a guy like Machado, put him on the team, and then all of a sudden be a contender? Uh, I don't see their pitching staff nearly competing no. with some of those staffs um, no. in the in the uh, West, uh, especially you know the Dodges, and then you look at um, you know Colorado. They have some right. really great young pitchers out there as well. I think it's just a tough a tough gig, and I, I'm surprised San Diego gave him that kind of money. Would you say that he's probably in the same situation he was in Baltimore? Probably, comparatively, I think he is. Other than the weather's better. Yeah, yeah, probably. And then what about Bryce? So Bryce Hopper, you did say Philly was an ideal landing spot for me. You yeah, were hoping for that, right? Yeah, yeah. I was hoping he landed there. I, I think that he could have a bigger impact there because they have some good talent on that team. Um, they have a great staff. Um, they got some really good. Um, you know, young pitchers. They got Aaron Nola, who, in my mind, is a Cy Young contender. Um, 
that's a that's a division they could certainly sniff winning that division for the next three to five years, I think, with Harper. The first four guys in the lineup were brought in in the offseason this year, right? So they brought in four, McCutcheon from the Yankees, yeah. right, came in. Um, they brought in Segura, the shortstop. And, uh, um, oh, the, the, the uh, JT Romano from, yeah, from, uh, from the Miami, Miami. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to be they're gonna be a real good team. I think they're far and away the team that should be uh, contending. I mean, Atlanta might be good as well. But I can see Philly taking that division. The question really, though, becomes the longevity of the contract. 13 right? years. So he's 26, 13 yeah. years, right? That yeah. makes him 39, 39 years old. When that thing expires, yeah. he's going to be paid 20-something million dollars really, against their salary yeah. cap. That's that's insane. Potentially, he might not even be on the roster. Yeah, he could be off the roster for one, two, or three years before that thing expires, and that's right. on their salary cap. They're stuck right. with it because it's it has no opt out, so yeah. him he can't leave, right. and the team can't get rid of him before thirteen years, right. and it has a no trade. But trade. You, but Philly might be all in. They might be they saying, "Hey, we're, we're going to win. We're going to win three out of the next six or seven World Series." And and then and then after that, who cares? Like, well, that's true. Sure. It only takes one for those fanatics. Down there. <laughs> They'll be happy for a hundred years. Look what happened when the Eagles won. They're, right. they're, they're, they're retired now. They think it's all over. They yeah. don't have to play in the playoffs ever yeah. again. I think I think they, they they will contend, and I think they'll contend year in and year out. It's just a question of what happens when he's 31, 32, right. and now he's it's tailing off. They're gonna have to probably eat it at that point. Hey, we'll see. what's the best news out of all this? That neither of them are in the AL or AL East. That's right. <laughs> see you later, boys. Thank you very much. Red Sox Nation loves that. All right, moving on, moving on. Boston Bruins. These guys have been flying under the radar right now. With all the other stuff happening in sports, even the Patriots making offseason news, right? They're flying under the radar. They are. And, and, and you know. Last 13 games. Yeah, they're, uh, what, 13? 11-0-2. 11-0-2 oh, in their last 13. Um, they went on the West Coast and took care of business out there. Um, Easily. Lost two overtime games and shootouts. Um, they're the third best team in the NHL, just a couple points behind Calgary right now. Right. Um, Tampa Bay, who's far and away the best team in all. Mean handled them, but they just took care of them um, four to one right. the other night um, right. with with three quick goals in the third period. Um, the question is, you know, as we know, it's a reset button in the NHL when that playoff. And how deep can they really go? And what's right. Tuka going to be like in the playoffs and all that? So. Can they contend with OV and the Capitals and and, and um, Sid the Kid in Pittsburgh? Yeah, right? if right. Pittsburgh even makes it in, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. All right, moving on. It is NFL Combine time. Today was uh, day two, and it was quarterback day at the Combine. So quarterback day at the Combine. A lot yeah. of stuff right. coming out. A lot of rumors. A lot of talk. The biggest thing, of course, is we talked about earlier, Kyler Murray. He's not too short. He came in at 5'10 plus, yeah. right? So that's great. He weighed 207. He has 9.5 inch hands, which is amongst the average in the NFL right now. Yeah. So he seems to be the star. He never even showed up on the field. What else about well, her well, quarterbacks? Well, exactly what we said. I mean, what just happened was he got measured. That's what he did in the combine. They, they took out a rule and they measured the guy. And all of a sudden, he's jumping up to number one overall. Kim Jones this morning reports that universally, he is considered the number one overall pick. Um, this guy was a, a, a mid-first rounder uh, a week ago. Right? Right, and right. now all of a sudden, everyone's saying he's number one overall. So is this Arizona giving this information to these reporters? Because where is that coming from? Right. And why would you as Arizona, unless you're ploying to get people to come knocking on your door and dump their, you know, do a... Uh, you know, Herschel Walker type deal or something to to get up to this number one pick. Like, are you gonna like? Why would Arizona a put that out there and b give up on Josh um, Rosen? Rosen. Here's what I'll say about that. Cliff Kingsbury last year when he was coaching in the Big Twelve against uh, Oklahoma and Kyla, he was on record the week before they had played against them. He said, "If I was an NFL coach." And I had a number one pick. I would draft Kyler, and look what he's doing. I, he's I, in the position to draft okay. Kyler right now. So you're going to chase quarterback. So you draft a quarterback number 10 overall last year. Right. Then you, you're you going to put a deal together, get rid of him, draft a number one pick overall this year. And then so what happens to the what, Right, yeah. The, the, you're going quarterback chasing. And then what happens if he doesn't work out? You t- you got to build your team. you got to build – You got then you land your ideal quarterback and you have no offensive line and no defense to even win games. Plus, they're probably paying some dead money for those quarterbacks as well, right? It's it's a crazy thought, but that is the hottest rumor, right, going on right now. The well, other I mean, rumor is – If you're going to play that game, why don't we say – why don't we put Oakland in that spot? 
There you go. Talk Oakland. about that for a moment. So, so, we've, so we've had that conversation off record. Right. So Oakland is picking at number four. Right. They have three picks in the first round. They're picking at number 24. They're picking at number 27. They can. They have a little wiggle room here. Um, they could actually gamble at this point in time. They, they could gamble at that point in time. They could either they could either hope he, they're bluffing and he falls to four, or they can make the deal with Arizona. But they'll take a look. If you're going to give up on a on a um, a, a Josh um, Rosen Rosen in uh, one year, look at Derek Carr. What has Derek Carr done? He's going to his sixth season with Oakland. Right. Okay. Aside from three years ago when he took him to the playoffs yes, for the first right, time right. in fourteen years, one and done. Yep. Then goes six and ten and four and twelve in the last two years. Like move on from him. Gruden's come in since then. Gruden's the hundred million dollar man there. He is. Yes, he is. And Carr has a pretty lucrative contract as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's it's, it's a tough one, but I, I I can't see, you know, this whole bidding game going on. Like I don't know where this came out of. All of a sudden, Arizona was a clear number one draft pick, and it, to me, it's a little crazy. The other wild one I thought was you heard number ten to the Jags, right? Um, well, to the Broncos. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, ten uh, Broncos. Oh, I'm sorry. Ten was the Broncos getting uh, Locke, Drew Locke, who yeah. right now some people say really is only a second round pick. But here's the Broncos. They just, just made their deal Drew Flacco. for Flacco. Can't be finalized for the 13th. We realized that, but supposedly it's said sudden and done. Yeah. And they have Case Keenum on the bench. Which Elway just came out yesterday and said, we want to keep Case on the bench. Yeah. Right? How do you pay all that money to those guys? Uh, it's quarterback chasing again. I mean, they, they, that's, a, that's probably a classic musical quarterback team. Since, right. Since Manning's been gone, we've seen all these guys come in and out, like Simeon and Osweiler and a few others there. Um, they, they have a kid they drafted. You can't think of him right now. But they're just... Oh, it's there. It just goes to show, and this was the story about Larry Bird a long time ago. Maybe really good guys can't be a coach or general manager because they expect to be the same type of player they were. And I think Elway is chasing himself. What do you think? Yeah, it could be. I mean, they haven't made the playoffs for the last for the last two years, and it's the first time I've done that in a while. I think. Right. And right. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not. You know, I know we got some viewers out there in Denver, but I'm sorry, I, they're just not going down the right road if they if they draft a quarterback at ten. And then we heard Carolina was looking at potentially taking um, Kyla as well. So that's another rumor that came out. They would, that he's tagged to go to Carolina. I mean, I'm sorry, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. And here's the Jags. We just talked about them getting um, Nick Foles, 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 right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So. I personally think, if I'm Jacksonville, I could see Kyla going to an Arizona or the Raiders. They're not ready to win yet, right? So mm -hmm. he needs a year or two to develop. Jacksonville was in the AFC Championship last year. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So why not take a guy like Nick Foles, who beat the Patriots, an AFC team, last year in the Super Bowl? All right. And what, then we have, what about Daniel Jones? Like, we haven't mentioned him yet. Daniel Jones. That's right. Good point. So he, he's another one that's now showing up. You heard 32 last week, and now we hear 15 to... 15 to the Redskins. Right? 32 to the, the Patriots. That would, I, Which would I'm have not, been ideal, right? Yeah. I'm not sure that... that, that I don't know. I don't know if that's a good fit for us at 32 right now. But all right, I well, he's going to go to the Redskins. Don't worry about but it. But he's all over the place. I mean, he's up, he's down. We'll see. We'll see how where he goes. Crazy times coming up. Hey, we can't wait to March 13th for the free agency period starts. So then we can start to sort this out a little bit, and then we can talk about the drafting as we get closer to yes. the draft. Yes, yes, that'll be exciting. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, our Patriots. So a lot of stuff happening in the Patriots family, right? Um, Devin McCourty, mm -hmm. the deal with Devin. So Devin's going into his final year in his contract. He's um, gonna he does not want to base. retire, right? Does not want to retire at this point. Um, there was some rumors out there that he might. Um, he's making nine million base, and he's thirteen point five million against the cap. Patriots probably looking to restructure that deal. Um, or How do you restructure that though? Because he's not going to play two years, well, so you can't extend him like well, they do all the time. Well, right? Yeah, 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 right. So maybe just just. They got to do something. I mean, they they're he's not going to um, to stay there if if they don't figure out a way to keep him paid and keep him on the on the roster. So let me ask you this question. So with that, right? Think about it. He's the brains on the field from the secondary side of the field, right? Yeah. The other brains on the field is Dante Hightower, which you just heard today. The, the other rumor is Dante doesn't want to. That he doesn't want to take a pay cut either. So we're, we're talking about the Patriots right now looking at Two like they've always coaches. done. Yeah, and, and this is where, you know, Kraft comes into play, right? Trying to put these deals together and try to figure out a way to, to get players, keep players. And, um, yeah, if, if those two guys 
a both go, if McCordy and Hightower go, this is going to be tough. Especially the fact that we have a whole new defensive coaching staff coming in, right? Right, with the exception of Belichick's kid. <laughs> Belichick's kid, who knows what his role really is. He's the son of the head coach, right? Yeah, he's a safety. He was a safeties coach last year. It's like year, working so. for the Boston City Department, you know, nepotism. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, yeah, I don't see how you can lose your two coaches on the field. You can't let Hightower and McCourty both go with all new coaches. You, you're, you're screwed. Right. And then, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a recipe for a bad defensive year. Let's flip the other side of the ball. So the other concern I have is the other rumors about uh, – Trent Brown, the big 6'8 monster left tackle who had a really good year. He came in with a lot of baggage. He was a top round, you know, number one draft pick for the Cleveland Browns a few years back. He came in with some, some concerns whether or not he could do the job. Yep. And he did an outstanding job. And arguably, I would say, and people, you can argue the point, I would say he was the best offensive lineman. I know Andrews had a fantastic year as well. He's always done a great job since yep. he's been here and Tony at left guard. But end to end, Preseason right through to the Super Bowl, I thought Trent was outstanding and did an awesome job. If they're going to screw with his salary and he moves on, we are screwed. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the number one priority is to keep Brady up. Yeah. And you it, got you it. Got, you, you got, he's 41 years he's old. 40, he'll be 42 when he starts next year. 42. I mean, he, he can only take so many hits. He only went on so many times. Right. Um, this year they did a decent job of it. You know, last year, different story. This year was was pretty good. So as long as they focus on that, they can run their offense. And if their offense is running and clicking, their defense can afford to be, you know, a, a top 10, you know, maybe middle top of the of Similar the to this league. year, right? They really weren't outstanding so, until they got to the playoffs, right? Right. They've been a bend no break type defense. Yep. And they, they're always good on points allowed, but not so much on yards right. allowed type of thing. So, I mean, if they play that same philosophy on defense and then just turn it up a notch when they need to, like they did this year against the against the Chiefs in the first half and against the Rams, then, yeah, they, they're they're in line to win another Super Bowl. But I, I'm still nervous about the those changes. I, if okay. you have no high tie, no McCordy, no Brown, oh. that, that's that's going to be a tough road. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. So, so here's another Another one on the offensive side. Uh, another item that came out today in the news, Dwayne Allen was released by the Pats. We're down to just two tight ends, Gronk, who supposedly could retire, and McAllister. Um, I would say that probably now they know that Gronk's not retiring by this news. Do you agree? Um, th- there's got to be some insight there. Uh, I do agree that they, they may know something to just go ahead and release Allen without... Um, knowing otherwise. I mean, there's some good tight ends in the draft. A kid that had an outstanding day today, speed-wise, was um, North Fan, no, right? North Fan, yeah. He, the North other Iowa ran a, He ran a 4 5 one, 40. Wide receiver speed. That's wide receiver speed. So do you um, look at someone like him to pair with a Gronk? Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this to you, Paul. Who does he remind you of? You think about a 4 5 sleek receiver, lean type of guy, not really a blocker, but yeah. kind of plays an ace-back role... That's that's Hernandez. That's the late, yeah, the late Aaron Hernandez. Right. Yeah, you could you could say that that's the same kind of athletic tight end that he would represent. And the offense when he and was there, paired with Gronk, was unbelievable. Right. Yeah, that could be. That a, would be huge. Not point. with his off-field characteristics, though. We don't want the same thing happening there again. Not right? at all. Not at <laughs> all. No. No. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. <sighs> yes. Mr. Kraft. Yes. Robert Kraft. Unfortunate news that came out a week ago Friday. I will tell you this. I know you were vacationing down in Mexico on a beach someplace when the news came out. You may yeah. not have heard it right away. I happened to be doing a phone interview at the time when I saw it in the background. I had a TV going. And I totally froze and stopped my phone interview to listen to what was going on. I was shocked by this. What did you think when you heard about it? Yeah, well, I heard about it from a text from you. Right. Um, and I was, fortunately, I was on the beach and I had access to Wi-Fi. So I was able to go in and start researching and look at some of the stories that were out. And, and what's your thoughts? Was, so my personal thoughts are, um, Kraft is an idiot for even being in this situation. I mean, the guy's, a, he's a brilliant guy. He runs a great organization and he does a lot of good things. He's a but, freaking but to, billionaire. But, but, and he's a billionaire. And, and to do something like this, to me, it's almost like, you know, he has some type of fetish going on in his mind or in his world where this is something that he wants to do in order to fulfill that fetish. And it might just be, hey, I can pick up the phone and call some high class hooker any night I want or have my, my people. Which he better me. he would have been better off doing. Which would have been better off doing. Because you think about this place. But to go right. It was a, it was in the middle of a strip plaza down in Florida. There was probably a liquor store next to it, I think, right? A church on the other side. A church on the other side. And by the way, I heard the going rates. $59 for the first half an hour, $79 for an hour. 
That's not a lot of money. <laughs> the average Joe could have afforded that. He's a billionaire showing up in a Bentley going in there. Yeah, which 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 goes back to my whole, he must want to have that seediness that edginess to the whole experience as part of the, of what gets him excited. All right. What's your do to legacy? So from a legacy standpoint, um, you know, I'm more concerned about the brand. I think from, if you look at the pages and what they've done, the, mm-hmm. the organization's legacy, the organization's um, accomplishments, nothing changes. Right. I mean, what happens on the field is, is not craft. Right. 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 Now, great. He, he writes, he writes the checks. Right, and he's probably involved in some decisions, but, but Belichick's running the show. Correct, and, Bel- and people come in and out of New England all the time. Yeah, and Belichick just takes them, figures out how they can be successful in the yes. field, leverages yes. their talent, and right. makes it work. Right. So uh, nothing from an accomplishment standpoint can be taken away from this. The brand, however, that's a different story. The brand's tainted. The, the brand's tainted, and you know, yeah, I love to go to different parts of the country, and I travel a lot in different parts of the world, and you know, I have my Patriots hat on, and I'm wondering, hey, what does someone think or? Feel when they see me with my Patriots hat and my Patriots right, T-shirt right. or something on, you know. And you were saying this kind of is similar to what happened with Zion Williamson and that brand, right? Right, because right. it's Nike, right? So you just Nike brand took a big hit, right? right. It, well, yeah, you know, financially the stock went down on that first day. Yes, but it, it's just a longevity thing. It's like it, it's it, it's in people's minds, so it's going to come out, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. over time it may fade or go away. Unfortunately for the Patriots case. That's that's not because the, they've had so much of a historical, uh, you know. When you take it, you mean Spygate, and you take the Flake Gate, and you take you know Julian suspension for PEDs, and you all these things that have happened in, in, to the Patriots over the last you know period of time, and the, the fact that we've been successful as well, people just look at this as another. Well, this is something else I can put on my little list to hate the Patriots. So, what do you think the penalty is? Because we know what happened to Robert Ursay from the Colts for for a DWI, which I believe is a much more worse offense. He got six games suspended and a five hundred thousand dollar fine. What do you think happens to Kraft in this case? Yeah. I mean, it's similar. At the end of the day, it's a misdemeanor. You but know? because he's, I mean, what if, the, what if Patriots? Your point. It's the Patriots, and the league is so far against them. Yeah. I think he gets at least the same, if not maybe even a year. Yeah, I mean, that does Jonathan be... have to take over? Do you think that he has to um, give up ownership? Does he have to give up management? I can't. See, I can't see that being the case. Now. Okay. He's obviously fighting this for a reason, right? So the latest is he's pleading not guilty, right? And he's going to go down to Florida. I don't know if he has, does. He have to go to Florida or not? But he's supposedly he's gone. The way the court system works, he could have a, a lawyer attend. But I just heard the other day that they're now saying he has to go to the uh, the arraignment. Okay, because he's looking because he's trying because it's a trial. So because he, right? he wants to fight it, I guess. Right. right. It's a non-jury trial. Um, I, he probably wants to say, hey, at least I can come out of this. No wrongdoing. He's probably going to. They're probably going to find a loophole, and, they, and he may win this thing. But, you know, it also could drag out. Uh, I think the fact that they got him on a video, Mr. which I don't want to see that video ever. Do you want to see that video? No. No. I don't want to see that video. I don't want to know. I, I mean, and uh, that's the other thing, too. If, the, if uh, They say Kraft went there two consecutive nights, right? And uh, this is on not... the weekend of the AFC Championship. The weekend, right. And this is not his first rodeo. <laughs> he, he's he's been to these places before. He's I don't think he just woke up one morning and said I'm going to decide to go. By the there. way, where's his so young a, blonde escort? Is all at all the games? I, yeah, I know. I don't know. It doesn't make any something. Something's a little bit awry here. That's all I got to say. It's a funny story. You know what? My personal opinion is, pay a million dollars to some type of um, organization and get the heck out of here. Put it yeah. under the rug. Yeah, because whether he gets whether he gets off or not, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, I think he did. He, he, it's still the fact that he was there. It, yeah. It's not going to. All those Patriots haters I was just telling you about, that's not going away. No. That's, that, 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 that's still going to be part of the whole right. story and everything right. else. So he's doing that for his own psyche, whatever he needs to do, and, and we'll see. All right. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is another wrap from the PB and Z Sports Chaos Show, your weekly sports sandwich. Again, We'll see you later on. Thank you for attending and listening to our our commentary. Have a great rest of your weekend. And be sure to go to our group page and join.